Thanks for that, uh, Melissa. It's time now for Top Talkers. Cub Carson joining us from uh, Bob FM, Candice Joe from Magic, and we also have Alison Sander joining us from CFRA. Great to have the panel with us. So I, I have to admit, I am not on Instagram. I haven't really done anything and I haven't really followed everything, but I know that it's huge and I know a lot of people are, are taking photos and sending them off. A lot of people doing it with food. You say you're actually guilty of it too. Uh, and so you see all of these images of food and people taking shots from restaurants and now a lot of restaurants are looking to ban some of these photos uh, and, and, and want people not taking pictures at all in their restaurants. This is something that's kind of coming down and it's new and now you're laughing going, Why? is this gonna I, work? I'm because apparently I'm the only I'm the only person on this panel that's actually on Instagram. Yes, mm -hmm. you are. <laughs> you guys are on Instagram. Yeah, no, so no. I've been guilty. Uh, I, I think the first picture of food that I took was because I bought new uh, Debbie Travis uh, plates, and they're right. they're white and they're square. And every piece of food that I have that I make looks good on it. So I actually <laughs> I actually took a picture of frozen pizzas. <laughs> so, <laughs> I put that up on, on Instagram. So these are actually <laughs> items that you've that you've yeah, done taken a picture of and thought. But that. I have been guilty of, of taking pictures of food while I'm in uh, in a restaurant as well and posting it. To to, to Instagram, yeah. Now I know we don't see it on Instagram, but I have seen it on Facebook. Have you I seen? I do post like, it on Facebook. I'm guilty of doing that. If I'm eating something and it is absolutely delicious and the presentation is nice, I want to show people, and it's good advertising too. People will see it and be like, you know what? I really want to try that, or no, I really don't want to try that. So I don't see what the big deal is. I agree. I mean, I personally don't tend to do it just because it's like. That's what's going in my mouth. That's not what's going on my Facebook page. But I understand the need to do it and the want to do it. And I don't see a problem with someone going, hey, check this out. This is what I ate today. This is really cool. It tasted really good. Free promotion. Yeah, the, Free, that's wonderful what you free think. promotion. You would you would think yeah, that, yeah. right? But I don't understand. But is there a negative aspect to it that people would that some restaurants are saying? Listen, we would rather people hear about it and come in and want to try this dish rather than being able to see everything ready to go. I think it comes down to any kind of good press. And I know the old mm -hmm. adage is there's no such thing as bad press as long as they spell your name right. But I think uh, nowadays with with a lot of the fancier restaurants, I think they have they, they like to have their own in-house photographers. Right. You know that set up the food exactly and the lighting is just perfect. And and let's be honest. A lot of us that, that aren't professional photographers, we're just, you know, snapping and clicking pictures with our phones. You know, we don't really know what the heck is going on. It's right? kind of, but it's kind of like when you go to a hotel website, right? And you see the fancy pictures that, you know, that the photographers have taken yeah, and what yeah. the rooms look like. And then you go to other websites and say, hey, this is what it really looks like. It's almost the same thing that you have these, because food photography is so huge now that you will get that, right? Well, I this mean, anytime you see a commercial on TV for any fast food place and it looks at how perfect, how perfect that burger looks, in reality, that's not even true. You know, it's all based on lies. I remember one show where they showed how they, they did a, a turkey for Butterball. And, and the turkey wasn't even cooked. They used spray on tan to make it look like it was golden brown. And then they cut a piece of the turkey and used a hair dryer to warm up that one piece of turkey mm -hmm. to make it look all just perfect white meat from it. So it, they're going yeah. that way. I'm saying it's all, food is all based on lies. And I'm sorry with the, the, the chef in the back is shaking his head at me, but it's all based on lies. The presentation is, I think, uh, uh, key to, to the experience of the whole food. I think the problem is a lot of people taking the pictures and they're not, they're, they're, they're on their phones as opposed to, to eating the food, right? Well, what I think is that you have these restaurants that are highly competitive and they don't want other people stealing their ideas. So I do understand when a restaurant comes and says, hey, that's enough. And what about those people who are crazy with their pictures? I mean, you see the tourists on Parliament Hill, they're standing like in the fountain to get that perfect shot. So what about these people sitting on their chairs aiming their cameras down like <laughs> I understand it, it can be disruptive <laughs> I need that picture but well, what, what if you were walking to a restaurant because they're saying this that no photographs allowed in our restaurant what if you're there on a birthday dinner you know and you want to you're there you're, cro yeah. you're crossing a thin line there you're not yeah. going to tell your your patrons who come there to celebrate their birthdays that they can't take a picture yeah. of themselves at the table but if it's Maybe one of those restaurants, if it's one of those restaurants that you know you have to book six months in advance mm -hmm. to get, they don't really need that kind of uh, business anyways, you know. So I think if you're used to going to a certain restaurant and you see, okay, I shouldn't take a picture here. I think there's a di big difference between going to you know the tea room at the Shadow Cartier and you know going to a, a chip truck in Vanier. You know, there's there's a big big there's difference. A very big right difference. There, yeah. Okay, and one thing I wanted to get to briefly too was Justin Bieber, and he is in a lot of hot water again, and I, I'm. I don't get this one. But he, when he actually, when he was in his, uh, Ottawa for his concert, he was playing uh, Nerf guns with his two younger siblings, and it so happened that one of the darts uh, hit a security guard. She is now looking to sue. Was it him or was it the kids? I mean, they were just, I don't know. Either How way. did the security guard get dressed in the morning? Did yeah. she hurt herself? 
because obviously she's quite fragile. That's if she's going to get, yeah. she's going to throw a lawsuit at a, at a Nerf gun. It's like I think at the end of the day, we're, we're just going to need to to just seal the border and not allow Justin Bieber back into Canada. I but think we really look it. so bad. I mean, look at this. Here's a security guard going, "Oh no, I'm going to sue Justin Bieber for shooting a Nerf guard in my vicinity." When, no matter where it hit you, but where do you stop? I mean, Ottawa looks horrible right now. I mean. What else is Ottawa going to do? These are people who have never been here going, well, if people are suing people for shooting Nerf darts at each other, that's not a city I want to go to. So right there, Justin Bieber drives the economy and kills the economy. Meanwhile, Nerf is very happy because they're getting free publicity for yeah. their products. Like, I've seen concerts, especially boy band concerts. You see the security guards, they're at the front. They have to deal with a lot of rowdy behavior. There's people pushing each other. They have to lift people, you know, out of the concert. What concerts are and you here going is this to? <laughs> Girls are crazy at boy band concerts. <laughs> Trust me, I've been to a few Backstreet of them. Boys. But if you know, if that's part of their job to lift people out of the crowds, and you're getting hit with like a Nerf gun, I don't know. I'd be more concerned with someone body surfing and landing on me than, than getting hit with a Nerf Not gun. Even. Now, mind you, is it a dart? Is it a ball? I mean, th that can make a big difference as well. So there was it was a Nerf battle with his two younger siblings. One of the darts flew off course and it hit the woman. Okay, well the darts I've got a Nerf dart gun at home. <laughs> they, they, they can, and it's got the suction cup and you they can, can get it. They can get it. Yeah, right? you get that in the eye and that stings. And I understand that maybe it was a little rowdy and you've got three boys playing around, but uh, it's just another thing. I, I feel bad. I mean, this was you know not something that Justin intended on doing, and it wasn't kind of bad behavior. But he's again. You know, so, we're getting crawled so in. So with that logic, as a member of the Brave Media who stood outside for like 17 hours just to catch a two-second glimpse of Justin Bieber, I can therefore sue him for frostbite on my toes. <laughs> 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 I was out there for so long. Does make sense. Thank you so much to our panel, uh, Alison Kenneth and Cub, for uh, for being on, on the board today. That's really fun. Okay, go take pictures. Well, we're going to have nice food here. You can take pictures. Oh, I'm, I'm already starting <laughs> the plates. <laughs>